you have a title and area of expertise? I'm a professor of psychology at Georgetown University and the director of the Children's Digital Media Center, which is my area of expertise. Can you tell me a little bit about the Children's Digital Media Center, what you do, what, what that's about? The Children's Digital Media Center is a consortium of universities uh, where we work together to find out how digital media are impacting children's lives. We look at their social development, their cognitive development, and their physical development. So uh, we've spent many, many years as a team trying to unravel the mysteries of a rapidly changing digital environment. And that keeps so, changing, doesn't it? It changes every day. I wanted to talk to you about the study with puppets and the certain skills that parents can help their children develop when they're using puppets. Can you tell me a little bit about your research? We began uh, because of the American Academy of Pediatrics argument that children couldn't understand media before age two in any meaningful fashion and that therefore children shouldn't be exposed to it, that it could potentially be harmful. We thought that there were just not enough data to arrive at a, a big conclusion like that, especially because families often have children who are four and five, along with children who are two and one. And so it's hard to keep some children watching media that's educational and beneficial and not have others somehow in the room. So uh, one thing that we thought we would do was to try to see how meaningful the characters were to children how helpful that knowing a character, because much of the research focused on strange people that toddlers didn't know. And so uh, what we did was we started looking at a character named Elmo, who most of the viewers will know, and we compared that to a character named Dodo, who is the Taiwanese Elmo. So he's very popular there. Our children don't know him. And then we had a control group who just did a task. It's a cognitive task where you sequence things. It's an early math skill. And sure enough, what we found is that the children, and they're 21 months old, so under two, learned better when it was Elmo doing the task, and they subsequently saw, were watching him on the screen, than when it was Dodo. And they had the exact same voice. So Elmo kids do better than Dodo kids. Elmo kids do better than the control group who see nothing at all. But the kids who saw Dodo didn't do as well as the control group. So that got us thinking about what could we do to get the children who saw Dodo to learn better. That's where the puppets come in. So the people from Taiwan, the Shen Yi Foundation, sent us all kinds of toys for kids. So they sent us puppets and they sent us um, a little video about Dodo having a birthday party and eating breakfast and just doing all kinds of fun stuff. Stickers, all sorts of things that go along with the books, you know, uh, little books that kids had. And then we put them in homes when children were 18 months old. And the parents worked with their kids for three months and we would go in and we'd take videos to see what they were doing, how they played with the Dodo puppet. And at the 21th marker, then we gave those children who had been familiarized with Dodo the sequencing task, this early math task. We compared them to children who only saw Dodo one time, like the first group, and they were 21 month olds, and we compared them to a control group who saw nothing. And this time, what we saw is the children who had been familiarized with Dodo and who had been playing with him in their home learned better than the control group. And that was not true for the children who just came in one time. We also noticed that what happened is the play was within the children who had Dodo in the homes, we noticed that the children who played in a certain way with the character, with the puppets, and that was to nurture the character, like feeding the character, putting the character to bed, were the ones who learned the most when they later saw the character on screen. What we concluded from this is that having parents play with children with characters that are educational can then help the children later learn from on-screen presentations with the character. Characters can become children's favorite teachers and they learn better from them just like children learn better from their real favorite teachers. So are they transferring either emotions or skills by watching these puppets? We think that what happens is a motivational component, that, that you just get more emotionally invested 
when you care about somebody. And so once you are emotionally invested, you are, have heightened kind of attention and processing of information. So our best, our best thought is that children come to care about characters and therefore they learn better from them. So it's a motivational direction. You had mentioned that the type of play, the nurturing, was very beneficial in terms of how the children were attached to the puppet and then how they processed later on. Could you speak to that a little bit? Nurturance was an amazing feature for kids. We saw children who would take the character and, you know, like put the character to bed and and then they would, one little boy liked to eat breakfast with Dodo every day, so he would sit in his high chair with Dodo beside him and they would have their little breakfast. And so that kind of nurturing sort of thing that takes place between children and puppets is an emotional interaction. And we think that that's the emergence of these close relationships that children form with characters. How do you take that one step further? How do parents take this information and use that at home in terms of education, in terms of behavioral skills and interpersonal skills as they're growing. The way that parents can use this information is to get puppets of the characters that are educational, that they can then play with their children about the lessons. Children always learn the most when their parents are involved. They can talk about what's going on, they can play out information, and in another study we also found that the more they personalize the information so that if it's the same gender as the child, even at uh, under 21 months old, if it says the child's name, if it uh, has the same favorite food, one little child lit up in another study when it was like the character's favorite food was blueberries. So, so just basically personalize the information, play with your child and do it in a way that fosters imagination and also nurturing behaviors between the child and the puppet then when they later watch the program or the character on TV that features that, that particular character, then they learn better. You had mentioned the um, early math task, a, a sequencing task. Can you yes. tell me a little bit about that, what the, the kids physically had to do? The sequencing task we had them do involved cups, which many families have. They're just little sequencing cups that are different sizes. So, you know, you have little cups and they go up to kind of bigger cups. And what the child has to do is they have to nest the cups. So they have to put the littler ones in the bigger ones. And what we found is that if you had a familiar character, a meaningful character, demonstrate that to you, you learn better than if you didn't have that meaningful character show it to you. The relational skills, the nesting cups, putting something that is smaller on top of something larger, does that lead down the road to develop the math skills, the early math skills or science skills? The numbers are inherently ordered. So you're looking at relative size, relative amount, and this is a very basic uh, cognitive skill that comes from a theorist named Piaget. So it's, it's uh, long tested and it's been in the literature for a long, long time. A simple answer would be yes, it could be the formation of early math skills. Uh, sequencing is part of the early formation of early math skills, yes. What would the next line of research be? Now that you have this body of research, first of all, what are the implications? What are the takeaway for parents? The takeaway for parents is to be involved with your children with media characters that do not take all statements as a blanket in terms of policy, that, that you have to look at the diet of media that children are being exposed to. You have to look at how they're being exposed, the family culture, and basically whether or not your child is involved with characters so that you can do things in your home to help children learn. Our next step has been to move into uh, interactive characters now that are, um, they're, they're built around the idea that in the future characters will be able to contingently reply to children. So that instead of, you know, the programs like Dora the Explorer where she'll say to you, uh, what's your favorite part of the story and pause and create this, this kind of conversation with you and she'll say I like that part too. My favorite part was now you'll be able to literally ask questions like what's three plus one and based on what the child says the characters will be able to give you feedback about whether you're right or not and if you're not right they'll be able to take you into other sorts of places to help you learn better. In terms of the research is that the next step for you? That's what we're doing right now.
that's absolutely what we're doing at the moment. So uh, we're, we're doing this with children who are a little older. These are four-year-olds, so uh, four and five-year-olds. So we're doing this uh, intelligent character study, trying to see how it is that these new interactional capabilities of the future and voice recognition, which will be a real game changer in terms of how children learn because they can talk, will, will help children learn. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you would want to make sure that parents know about the study? In terms of what I'd like to, parents to know in terms of a bigger picture is to think of media as not being good or bad. It's something that we've created. And so how can you use it in ways to help your children learn? So really paying attention to the quality of the experience. Uh, you don't want them to spend 24-7 their whole lives just doing nothing but media but really to, to take to heart uh, how you can improve children's learning and having a parent involved with your child, playing with their child, helps them take what's on screen into their real lives. And when you were talking about nurturing, could you name some of the activities that parents would be able to interact with with the puppets with their children? Imaginatively, all you have to do is just have like the puppet and just go through your room and, you know, like, like actually say, oh, you know, it looks like looks like Dodo's a little bit tired. Do you think he's ready for a nap? And the child might look and say, oh, I don't know, and say, you know, well, well, let's give him a few more minutes, but it looks like in about two minutes it'll be nap time. And then you put the puppet down and then, you know, then say, well, do you think Dodo needs a, a little blanket? And then put a blanket on Dodo and how about if we sing to Dodo? And so, so you could do things like that or you could put it, at breakfast time, you could say, do you think Dodo might want some breakfast? Let's put him up there with you. And so, so the child can be involved and say, okay, why don't you pretend like you're feeding Dodo? You know, or, or okay, now let's see you feed Dodo. Or, you know, something like that. Just kind of encouraging children to interact with their puppets. Where was your undergraduate and your master's? Where did you study? I uh, got a bachelor's degree in psychology at West Virginia University, which is my home state. And then I went to uh, the Pennsylvania State University and got a master's and met uh, my mentor who moved to the University of Kansas, and I went there too. So uh, I came through three different state universities. So your PhD was at Kansas? Uh, Kansas? Kansas, University of Kansas, and it's in developmental and child psychology.